Over the last few hundred years, both scientists and science fiction writers have fantasized over the possibility of transferring human consciousness into a computer, a functioning copy of the human mind on a silicon chip. Well, I'm here to tell you that there is someone among us who has already achieved such an amazing feat. His name is Nobbs, and he has successfully transferred his musical persona into this effect pedal called the blooper. In this video, I want to talk to you about my experience with this pedal from a real user's perspective, beyond the spec sheet after having it for a few months now. I want to tell you what you can expect this pedal to do for you, who it might be for, and for whom it's not. Though this is a review of the blooper, I won't be demoing its every single function, as there are many other YouTubers out there who have done so beautifully and in glorious stop motion. This video is more of a reality check for all of you out there who just like me, are really attracted to new and shiny things that aren't always necessarily the best fit for your workflow or your studio. If you're already a subscriber, huge welcome back, and I wanna thank you so much for helping this little channel grow to over 18,000 subs this year. All this is possible because of you, and I can't wait to keep hanging out in 2022. Hi, welcome to the Midlight Synthesis. Let's get started. First impressions. The box the blooper comes in is more akin to opening a new iPhone than a guitar pedal. It's full of cool stickers and little extras that reassure you that this is obviously worth its hefty asking price. Aesthetically, I think it's one of the prettiest music devices I've ever owned. Its beautiful colors and smart layout, along with the quirky graphics scattered along the faceplate, let you immediately know that this thing is special, unique. The knobs on it look amazing and feel sturdy. The buttons and overall design are stylish vintage with a hint of premium, and it all gives off that dreamy and beautiful vibe that is so particular to Mr. Knobs. The device itself is cleverly thought out. It is very minimalistic, as most pedals need to be, but there are enough controls here on the faceplate to let you know exactly what's going on, at least most of the time. As a quick overview, you have a mono audio input and output, an input for CV or an expression pedal with which you can control mob parameters, and you get an input for MIDI or a foot switch to better control the start and end of your loops, as well as a USB port for hooking the device up to a computer. On the top of the pedal, you have two rows of knobs. You get a volume slash ramping control, a knob for selecting your loop layers, and a repeats knob that goes from zero to infinity. And beyond! On the second row is where things get really interesting. The knobs on the left and right, along with their switches, let you select and control a number of different mods, which you can use to tweak and mangle your loop into oblivion. The middle knob is a stability control, which ages and warbles your loop, while also giving it a very nice hiss, much like an aged tape effect. The middle switch lets you choose between three modes of looping and overdubbing, normal, additive, and sample mode. In the bottom, you have a couple of foot switches that let you start, stop, overdub, and clear your loops, as well as switch to save or load loops into the device itself, which is extremely practical, since you will want to save your sonic experiments constantly. Three lights that flash green and red give you visual feedback to let you know when you are recording, overdubbing, erasing, saving, and loading loops. On the top of the pedal, you'll find a tiny row of inconspicuous dip switches, which you might be tempted to overlook. But beware, they are essential if you want to have the full blooper experience, and you shouldn't be intimidated by them, as these give you direct access to a myriad of parameters that truly bring this pedal to life. Finally, on the bottom, you have two buttons with light rings that flash red and blue when you turn on your mods as well as let you know when the loop restarts. And they also act as a tempo indicator when you're using it as straight up delay. Learning curve and workflow. Reading the manual and getting familiar with the basic functions of the blooper might take you a few minutes. Understanding it fully and really taking advantage of its capabilities will take you a bit longer. As to the blooper in actual use, it can act as simple or as weird as you want it to be. It can act as an ordinary looper pedal, a delay pedal, and what is basically a sampler in guitar pedal form. As I have other dedicated loopers and delays, I found that I enjoy the blooper most when I used it to do what it was made for, mangling and manipulating loops into unrecognizable but wonderful new soundscapes and textures. The workflow on the blooper is immediately different than what you would find on other samplers like the MPC or the Octatrack. You have such a limited set of immediately available options that it feels extremely focused to the point where working with it feels almost like a meditation. Since you don't have the distraction of a screen, your senses focus entirely on hearing your loop and finding the nuances and golden nuggets hiding in between the spaces of your audio. It feels a bit like working with an SP404 at times, and that's a good thing. 
I've also found that it works just as great on guitars as it does on synths, and I found it to be more manageable on shorter loops than on very long ones. The modifiers themselves are easy to understand, but a bit harder to master, especially when you start stacking them up on top of each other, which can quickly get out of hand in terms of usability of your sonic chimeras. With just a few twists, your beautiful loop can quickly morph into an unrecognizable mess. Worry not though, because you can always easily go back and skim through the previous layers of your loops, which lets you experiment willy-nilly with practically no fear. Another huge plus that the blooper has going for it is its companion manager software. There, you can easily swap out your mods as well as get easy access to your saved loops, which makes it feel much more accessible. However, with the companion app being so capable and having so much control with the pedal, it does leave me wishing that it could have opened up more control over other functions through the app as well. Things like setting tempo, loop length, or the much needed capability of a count-in option would have been amazing. Of course, you can always clock sync and control the pedal through MIDI via CV, but not having the option of doing so through the USB in the app feels like a missed opportunity. A funny thing though about these modern guitar pedals, like the Microcosm, the Blooper, and the Night Sky, is that even though their sturdy build might suggest floor duties on a pedal board, I feel that they're so feature packed that they have started to outgrow their pedal form factor and have earned their place at arm's reach on top of the desk. The blooper would be wasted if you just set and forget, even when used as a conventional looper or a delay. So my suggestion here is, if you're gonna buy the looper, be prepared to buy yourself a foot switch, an expression pedal, and probably a MIDI box if you don't have one. By the way, if you're enjoying this content, I would really appreciate it if you could take a second and click that like button, because it really helps the channel grow, and I really enjoy being here. Thanks. Effects quality. I own many modern audio manglers, and comparing the blooper's effect quality to any of them, I have to say that I am very impressed. The effects can be crystal clear or aggressively dirty, depending on what you want them to be. The pitch shifting and time stretching algorithms are stellar and have nothing to envy something like the Octatrack or the MPC. The stability parameter, which ages and gives pitch variations to your loop, as well as adds a saturated noise, is nothing short of breathtaking. It's at least as crispy as the vinyl effect on the SP404, and it instantly gives you a lo-fi warmth to whatever sound you throw at it. The Scrambler, an algorithm that slices, dices, and mixes up your loop into new patterns, is a particular favorite of mine, as it can be so immersive that I sometimes found myself losing hours just trying it out. Other effects include the dropper, which takes out bits and pieces of your loop either randomly or in a pattern, and the stopper, a tape stop or fade out mod that can make for some pretty cool effects. However, not all the mods are as usable or maybe as musical as I'd like them to be. The aforementioned Scrambler, for example, though extremely entertaining, does not always yield any usable results that I could place in an actual song. Same goes when you start stacking up mod upon mod on additive mode. It kind of feels like when my kids make art with Play-Doh. It's fun as hell, but often the end result is just one big pile of shit. And I think that this is a crucial aspect to consider when you're thinking of buying this pedal. Now, don't get me wrong, you can get some beautiful sounds out of the blooper, but I find that its major highs come when I just let myself be immersed in its soundscapes and not when I'm trying to approach it in a more traditional song composition sense. Taking that into consideration, and even though I've thoroughly enjoyed my time with the blooper, I do find myself a bit hesitant to recommend it fully to everyone. So who is this pedal for then? This pedal is for anyone looking for the highest quality of effects to help them get wildly experimental and looking to get lost in vast ambient musical explorations while also maintaining a small form factor with a beautiful and elegant aesthetic with a clutter-free interface and with a fluid, customizable workflow, as well as a sample gold mine for anyone who owns something like the SP404, the Octatrack, or the MPC. Also, as an unconventional and modifiable delay and straight-up looper, it's a great pedal that offers a different take on a very common effect. I wouldn't recommend this for those who want a more traditional and structured music making approach, or people who aren't willing to let the sounds take them along for a ride. If what you're looking for is a sample mangling experience where you can be firmly at the helm of your journey, I think you might be better served with something like the SP404 Mark II. If you want a fully featured and insanely precise multi-mode delay, maybe you should be looking at something like the Strymon Timeline. As for me, will I be keeping the blooper? I'm still not entirely sure. I have other gear that does similar things, but nothing quite like it either. I don't always seem to get usable results out of it, but frustrating as that may be, I'd be lying if I said I didn't enjoy the ride. So I guess only time will tell. As always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video useful, or at least entertaining. I'll see you next time.